All right, it's recording. Cool. Yeah, you'll just talk right into that one, and I'll talk into this one. That sounds good. Let's, uh... Just make sure. Okay. Oh, now why is that on that? Dummy, 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 dummy. Camps tomorrow, it sounds yeah, like the uh, um, the wind is actually feels blowing, good. blowing from the uh, northwest now. Yeah, which should be better for us. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see if this works. No, we're not getting anything. What the hell? <laughs> One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we are recording. All right, say something. Get up close to that mic. One, two, three, four. Check, check. One, two, three, four. Uh, get closer. Yeah, you gotta Can you hear me. You gotta stand up. Can you hear me? Okay, we'll pump you up just a little bit here. All right. Keep talking. I'm, just like I'm talking to you. Can you hear me, Vaughn? One, two, three, four. Okay, keep talking. One, two, three, four. All right. We're gonna see how that works. I don't trust it. That doesn't look like uh, we're getting high enough volumes on that. So just speak louder. Uh, probably gonna have to. Okay. Now we're talking. Okay, now talk. ESPN Radio, 1420. I'll give you a little more. So I tend to talk a little bit louder than the average bear sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we got to tone me down. Okay, keep talking. One, two, three, four. Probably the mic more than anything. All right, here we go. Uh, a few notes there. Taylor Malhoff in three, two, one. Welcome back to the Sports Hub, and we decided we're going to bring a guy in here that, uh, well, he's got very deep Aberdeen roots. Um, Taylor Malhoff, the the kicking machine. I'll <laughs> tell you what, uh, I saw this young man kicking out in his backyard with his dad many times when he was about 10, 11 years old, and his dad looked at me and he, he said, kid's going to be good. And guess what? He was right. Welcome, Taylor. Thanks for having me on, Vaughn. Now, you're... Of course, in Aberdeen, we're going to talk first. We're going to kind of split this up a little bit. You're in Aberdeen. You've got a kicking camp going on, and, and we're doing this on Wednesday. But you got your kicking camp going on tomorrow. When actually, when this uh, interview is being played, you guys are going to be out there kicking, aren't you? We are. We we start at two o'clock. Uh, I believe this show starts running at one. Uh, so you know, if there's some guys out there, some kickers in the area, uh, the surrounding towns, uh, walk-ups are definitely welcome if they want to come out. That's going to be a real small group. Of guys, we had about I think about eight to ten last year, and it's a perfect perfect size group for some guys to come out and uh, learn a little bit more about kicking and punting. And it's an instructional camp, so guys come here and get better. And uh, we have a lot of fun as well. Do you do this all on your own, Taylor, or have you got other guys working with you, like for the long snapping and, and punting and stuff? Yeah, well, typically in, in other areas throughout the Midwest, whether I'm in Chicago or Milwaukee or Madison, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, some of these 
larger areas where I'll get quite a few kickers and punters at the camps. Then I have other guys come in. Uh, I bring, you know, I've developed a lot of relationships with other guys, uh, you know, throughout college football as well as guys that play, whether it's arena league or have been in NFL camps or different NFL guys. So I bring in a handful of guys uh, to handle that, and then I'll always have. Uh, one of my snappers, whether he was a guy at University of Wisconsin or a guy that was a snapper for me down in New Orleans when I was there, uh, he does a lot of the snapping stuff uh, when I have these other camps. Now we're talking to Taylor Malhoff uh, here on the Sports Hub. Uh, Taylor, now what made you decide to start this camp? I mean, I know as a youngster, you went to a number of kicking camps yourself. Was that kind of the inspiration for this for you? Yeah, well, you know. One of the main reasons was, uh, first of all, because uh, <laughs> when I was released, you know, after the year, when I was released by the Vikings, I had so many different coaches over in Wisconsin area asking about, hey, we work with my kicker here, we work with this guy. I was doing a lot of lessons, and uh, I said, you know what, I should just and throw not getting it. paid <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I said I should throw a camp together here and just uh, see kind of what happens. Uh, it's something that I love doing. Obviously, it's what I know best. And uh, I, to me, it's not work. I'm out there having fun, and I'm teaching what I know and, and passing the word on. But, but also, like you said, uh, you know, being from, from a smaller town in South Dakota, uh, I somehow talked my dad into take me out to a big camp out in Las Vegas, performed really well, and totally surprised myself. And uh, uh, it, was, it was basically a platform for me to get noticed, get some exposure. And I feel like there are a lot of guys out here, whether it's in South Dakota, whether it's in Minnesota, Wisconsin, there are a lot of guys that have some good talent, but it's 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 sometimes it's a little more, it's tougher for us to be seen. It's tougher for us to get exposure than some of these big football states like Florida or Texas or California. And uh, by having camps putting these guys on, a they're getting better, they're learning instruction. Kickers are getting pretty good now at an earlier age. Uh, but b they're getting in front of someone. Uh, you know, I get calls from coaches all over the country. Yeah, that, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Do coaches come to these things or contact you? They're not allowed to, to attend oh, these for, okay. per NCAA rules. The NCAA rule book is <laughs> it's, 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 it's long and it's complicated. Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, they'll I'll get random calls all the time saying, hey, who's the best guy in the class of 2012 you're working with? Who's the best guy? Who's the best punter you have available right now? And uh, so that's, that's kind of cool to, uh, you know, when you can help someone out and, and uh, one of the guys that I work with quite a bit who's come along a lot, really come along well, uh, is going to uh, get a scholarship to a Division II school out in California, Humboldt State just recently, and uh, him and his family are really excited about that. So when you know when you can help someone out and, uh, like I said, help these guys get exposure and, and put them on the map a little bit, it's, it's pretty rewarding. We're talking to Taylor Melhoff of Taylor Melhoff Kicking. Right. Absolutely. You've got, now, you just mentioned you know Chicago, Minneapolis, Madison. Where all have you been for your kicking camp? Uh, I've been up in the Green Bay area as well. Um, I, I do a, a couple camps. I do one in the Vikings indoor facility over in, uh, in Eden Prairie, and then the summer I do one in St. Paul. Uh, I've done camps in Sioux Falls, uh, as well as other places: Milwaukee, Madison, Chicago. Um, I guess that's a, that's about it. So you still kind of have a working relationship, shall we, shall we say, with the Vikings? Uh, <laughs> not necessarily. They let you play in their, <laughs> you know, in their Absolutely. Stadium. You know, being there, uh, when Coach Childress was there, awesome guy. You know, he, he had connections to the University of Wisconsin as well. He was a coach there. And uh, just developed a lot of good relationships with people. I was there. I signed a futures contract, so meaning I was there at the end of the 08 season all the way through 09. I was there for quite a while, and I did a lot of community service work for them. Did a lot, you know, I just I developed a good relationship with their community events guy. That uh, uh, I just I did a lot of good stuff for them. And, and like I said, you know, when when you help people out like that, they want to help you out as well. And they've been awesome to let me use the indoor facility. Typically, it's not it's not rented out, and so for them to let me do that every year in in, uh, in February to hold a camp you know the kids get so excited I know if I was in high school and I had an opportunity to go kick in there in the Vikings indoor facility I'd be pretty excited so uh, it's pretty you know I'm, I'm very fortunate to have that and build the relationships that I have with some of these guys we'll be right back with more of Taylor Melhoff kicking right here on the sports hub we're just gonna do two two segments cool it's so hard to find anybody to uh, interview this time of year, yeah, uh, you know the coaches. Hey, football hasn't started, yeah. and this and that. Yeah, and I'm scrounging and looking. So yeah. you're going to be a, All a, right. a two segment guy. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, that's fine with me. All right, here we go. All right, uh, second round, Taylor Melhoff in three, two, one. 
Welcome back to the Sports Hub. We are still here with Taylor Malhoff in our second session with him. Now, Taylor, got to ask you, are you still dreaming of the NFL? Absolutely. You know, and uh, last year I kicked in the UFL, and um, at the end of the season there, I, I heard from a handful of teams. Uh, in March, I was scheduled to work out with a couple teams, and when this lockout went into place, it's all just been kind of up in the air. And uh, with, with the lockout, you know, I can't speak to teams, my agent can't speak to teams, so it's all just, you know, I, I don't know if there's one team out there looking at me, I don't know there's two, I don't know, maybe there's none, but, uh, you know, all I can control is to, to be ready to roll uh, when this thing gets finished up, hopefully it sounds like by the end of this week, and what's going to happen, it's going to be crazy, uh, early next week, right now there are, you know, on average I'd say most teams have about 45, 48 guys signed, somewhere right in there. Uh, your roster, you're, el you're eligible to have 53 when the season begins. But what's going to happen is training camps typically have 77 guys. They're going to have 90 this year because of the uh, just basically not having OTAs and mini camps, all this stuff. So each team is going to be signing about 42 guys on average, say 42 times 32. You know, there are going to be over 1,200 guys that are going to be signed in a four-day span. And uh, I don't know how the NFL is going to do it. It's going to be pretty crazy. Uh, so this could play in your favor. Yeah, absolutely. It could. You know, and the longer it goes on, the, the longer it goes on, uh, I think it will hurt me just because, you know, mini camps are for someone like myself. Uh, it, we need those to, to get in there and prove ourselves and you know I need to get into preseason get some preseason games uh, but if this lockout keeps going on and all of a sudden hey training camps gonna be only two weeks long they're just gonna take the guys that they had from last year they're gonna bring them in they're gonna say hey our guy our veteran has to get his work in and that's it you know but uh, if, if it's a normal training camp then hopefully it could play in my favor where you get in there and get some get some preseason stuff and then you know it's all just a matter of being in the right place at the right time, hopefully, you know, you get in somewhere and if there's a veteran, maybe he tweaks his groin or he pulls a hammy. If you perform well there, uh, you know, you never know you could be back there or at the same time you're auditioning for 31 other teams at the same time. And so, uh, you know, as long as my name is relevant, as long as I keep hearing from teams, I'm going to keep plugging away at it. And uh, that's why I enjoy doing this, this other business that I have, doing my camps and everything. It really it keeps me plugged in. It's a great, it's a you know, great business for me to be doing where I can do as much as I want to do, uh, but also by helping these guys out and teaching kicking, uh, I'm engulfed in it, and it, it's 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 made me a better player as well. You know, I, I've I've understood the the mental side of it so much more now, and uh, you know, when you're teaching something, you, it almost it comes back and helps you out as well. We're talking to Taylor Malhoff here on the Sports Hub, the the former Aberdeen Central Golden Eagle, the former Wisconsin Badger, the former Saint the former Viking, the former Hartford Colonial. So, <laughs> yeah, a little bit well, I forgot junior high. I, I can't remember if you were a north sider or a south sider. Yeah, up at Holgate. You were up at Holgate. Yeah. All right. Um, in your professional career, you know, you spent time with the Saints, you spent time with the Vikings and the Hartford Colonials. Any one of them more fun, more intriguing, whatever you want to call it, uh, to you than the other? Uh, well, first of all, I mean, this whole, my professional career up to this point, it's been a... <laughs> It's been a roller coaster ride, so to speak. You know, getting drafted and, and being in a position to do so, to get drafted, uh, it was just, you know, I wasn't a high. It was, I was feeling pretty good. And, Six and, rounder. And, uh, absolutely. You know, for and, the Saints. And, yeah. and to, to get picked as a draft pick, typically there's there's one a year. This year there were one, the year before there were none, you know, and, and so to get picked as a kicker is, it's uh, it's an honor. And so, uh, you know, I go there and I'm on, I'm feeling good and, and knowing I'm going in and competing. And, and when you get released, it's tough on yourself. It's, uh, uh, you know, they're basically saying, hey, you're not good good enough for us right now. And uh, so you have to go back to the drawing board and, and really evaluate yourself and say, hey, this is what I need to do to get better. You have to identify your weaknesses and say, you know, I've got to make this a strength. And so I've done that up to this point. And, uh, but, you know, as far as, which what experience has been the most fun and the most intriguing? I think, you know, being being a part of New Orleans down there, um, you know, there it was just it, it was a lot of fun. It, it was being able to play. You know, we we went over to London having that experience over there. Uh, we played in that international game against the Chargers. Just you know, so many experiences like that that uh, you know that I feel so fortunate and blessed to be able to experience that kind of stuff. And, you know, not everyone gets to do that, and and you know, it's sometimes it's, it's frustrating for me. 
to see, hey, you know what what could have been, and and to see that the kicker there that's taken my place, Garrett Hartley, had a lot, you know, have success and kicking the Super Bowl and kicking the playoffs, and he just signed a pretty pretty nice little contract for himself, and and you know you always look back and and you you know, see you know what could have been, but I've learned to to not look at it that way and just know that you know I've been pretty fortunate to even have an opportunity to do so, and uh, you know I think. I think uh, a lot of kickers to, to survive in that league, it's it's unheard of to go somewhere and get drafted and kick for 15 years. You know, you have to face some adversity, you have to go through some things, you have to miss some kicks, and it just makes you stronger along the way. And you know, for me to go to Minnesota and learn from a guy like Ryan Longwell, who I think is probably the best field goal kicker in the league, but just a really good guy too, uh, to learn from him and see how a true pro prepares. Uh, it was a, it was definitely beneficial for me to see that, and it's definitely made me a better kicker now. Did you see different preparation in the pros than what you did at uh, Wisconsin? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know you still when you're at, when you're at Wisconsin when you're at a program like that, uh, they prepare you the right way. You know, you it's it's hard work. It's a full time job all year round, uh, but you always have you know c kind of the younger guys coming in. It's a wake up call to how much hard work it is. To some of those guys, it is, but at the pro level, uh, there you know you're there for a reason. Those are the guys. This is the very very elite of of even the, the top college players, and to get to that spot, you know these guys are working very hard, and uh, you know you walk into a locker room, it's just these guys happen to be thirty year old men that have a wife and kids, and they just happen to play football for for a profession. That's a profession. You know, yeah. Absolutely, and and uh, but you know those guys that go in there and. And, and do well, you know, they, they take care of their bodies all year round. And, you know, like I said, there's a reason why they're there. And I can see by the shirt you're wearing and stuff, you take care of yourself too. <laughs> uh, hey, you gotta, if you want to take a shot at this NFL stuff. Absolutely. Now, uh, can you walk across the Wisconsin campus and not get noticed? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can now. Huh? You've yeah. been out for a while, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I love going back to Madison. They're, uh, it's just it's it's such a great little town. I, I mean, it's such a college town, and and uh, you know the way the campus is set up right in between two lakes right there, especially in the summer. I absolutely love Madison, and uh, I'm I'm excited about them coming up this year. They had a great run last year, and uh, they just got a new quarterback that transferred from NC State. Yeah, that's I saw that. Supposed to be a stud, so I know I'm excited for them. The program is definitely on the rise, and I'm excited. Coach Bielema has really done a good job there. Yeah, he's. Uh we went to the game your senior year there, that first game yeah. against uh, Washington State. Yep. It was there, and first time I'd ever been there. Oh, oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Pretty it was cool a hot experience. day. Not quite as hot as today, yeah. but it was a hot day. <laughs> Luckily, we were sitting in the shade, my yeah. brother and I. And yeah. It really worked out nice. The other guys, your dad and the others, they were over in the sunshine getting baked. Yeah. Yeah. You came into the Northwestern game one year, too, didn't you? Yes, we did. Your dad and I did. We went down to Chicago, and that one didn't turn out as well yeah. as the Washington State yeah. game, but uh, it, that was, it was a treat, too, yeah. absolutely, to, to see you play and... and to know where you came from, Taylor. It has uh, been a pleasure watching you and keeping track of you, and we're going to continue to do that. <laughs> and we hope and wish the best for you. NFL, here we come. I hope so. I appreciate it, Vaughn. You bet. Taylor Malhoff here on the Sports Hub. We'll be back with more. Cool. Did we do all right? We did good. All right. We did good. <laughs> Wonderful. We did good. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. That was cool. great. That was great. Awesome. Well, I'm glad I could fill a couple yeah, spaces. Yeah, I wrote a few. No ah, dang, I was going to throw one. Yeah, I didn't realize I, I Googled you, of course. Yeah. I, f I forgot you're the second leading scorer behind Ron Day in Wisconsin yeah. history. Yeah. 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 Of course, I think they, the, uh, I think the yeah, kicker started there, for four years. Yeah. The, the, the kicker there, actually, because they scored points like absolute crazy last year. They, I mean, they, they, scored, they scored 80 points a couple times last oh, year. Yeah. They, um, the kicker there... Uh, I think he'll. I think he probably is on pace to, to pass me up this year. But yeah, it's kind of cool. The you know the stat is behind Ron Dane. Yeah. Here's a Heisman Trophy winner. And <laughs> hey, that's me. So. <laughs> right by his name. Yeah. yeah. So kind of cool. Fantastic. Well, great. I'll let you yeah. get back to Absolutely. real work. Yeah. All right. Thanks Try for coming out, Taylor. Done. My dad. That guy's been out the golf course every day since I've been back. I think. <laughs> Jeez. That dog. Chase that guy down. Let's see.